All right, guys, we're back on a C20. We got some bad news, some good news, I guess you could call it. Uh, I kind of knew this was going to happen, but it is what it is. You get this when you work on the old stuff, but I enjoy doing what I do, so it'll be an okay journey. But today we're going to diagnose, double check my theory. Um, I think this thing's got a bad camshaft. Why? Uh, it's hard to tell with the exhaust the way it is. Yes, it's a little loud, but I've driven things with plain old open headers. They never drive like the way, the way this thing is driving. So um, there's a really loud chatter on this side coming from the engine. And on this side exhaust, there's a, a putt. So it's idling. And then up here on the valve cover by the valve train, there's a clattering kind of going on. So I'm going to take these um, rocker arm covers off and check all the rocker arms i'm sure there's going to be a little clicky clacky going wiggle wiggle so we'll double check make sure it's not a push rod or something stupid like that um and then we'll start it up and see how many rockers don't move and if that's the case i know what i gotta do and that being said i would have to strip this all down get that lump stick out put the new lump stick in i'm not going to go anything crazy maybe just a rv or a truck cam or whatever you want to call it so i can get this thing back on the road because i need to drive this thing but that's what i believe it is i believe it's a bad cam so for now i'm going to tear this valve cover off get these lightning hoses out of the way get some other plastic hoses out of the way and and you guys will get to see firsthand what's actually wrong so valve cover pulled off i'm gonna start it up here and and see which rocker arms aren't moving and which ones are and see if we can track down that noise i showed you guys earlier oh right here this rock arm isn't moving and this one's the one that's that's clattering this guy's barely even moving so i think i got my answer but to verify that i'm gonna pull these uh, push rods out, make sure they're not bent push rods for some odd reason. Other than that, I think I know what my answer is. So all my questions on this thing have been answered. I know what I gotta do. I'm gonna start by taking everything apart. Once I get to coolant, I'll start draining coolant, make a mess because it usually happens at, anyway. So, but for now, I'm going to start taking the top end apart and we'll get her down to the long block and see what comes of it. It might kind of jump around because I don't want this to be too long of a video. It's already going to be a long enough video because I'm probably going to go until I get the cam out for this video. So it's going to be a long video. You might skip a few things, but other than that, I'll pull valve covers, carb intake, distributor, alternator, alternator bracket, water pump, pulleys, harmonic balancer, radiator, the whole thing um probably gonna have to take the grill out to get the camo actually i might not i might be able to just pull it out and then tip it up and out so basically it's all coming apart the only thing i'm not going to touch is exhaust header stuff like that that can all stay um so yeah i'm gonna dig into this and the process begins
right, got the radiator out. Um, got one of the belts off. Made a mess on the floor. Typical coolant issue. Um, I think I'm going to start ripping the front of the motor apart. Once I get the front of the motor apart, I'll have to go back down there to take the oil pan off so I can get the timing cover off. And once I take care of that, we can see how sloppy that chain is. This sh this motor should have the nylon tooth uh, gear, so she'll be a, a little slopped out, but that should all be replaced when I do the cam. So let's dig into it and see what we can find. All right, give you guys a little update here. All the front accessories are off except for the pulley and the, uh, the harmonic balancer. Um, the next step I'm going to take is I'm going to roll the motor over to top dead center, pull the distributor out, start pulling apart the front here, um, the balancer and the pulley. Then I'll take the intake off. I'll probably take the other valve cover off to make my job easier. Um, other than that, it's pretty much pulled apart up front here. That's about all I got to do for now. I got to pull a pan before I can pull a timing cover though. Uh, cause you can't get it off without bending the crap out of it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for timing cover, oil pan, valve covers. As long as I got them off, I should do something. I'm probably going to paint them. I'm debating painting these for this engine or putting this stuff on that I had all ready for that engine, which isn't going to be a while before I get to it. Um, I don't know for sure though they're both 76 engines so they, they should be fine but um these are all painted up nice and stuff i just got to get a seal for this one and these valve covers are painted nice these got a little bit of pitting on it though so i might i might put these on that engine in there but i might leave the oil pan off because that one's going to need an oil pan for sure so maybe i'll paint the oil pan that's in there and use that one i think that's what i'll do and clean it up and give it a little coat of paint um timing tab eh, i don't know maybe i'll switch them maybe i'll use this one all depends valve covers i'll use on this one though so i can get the better non-pitted valve covers for that motor because i'm hoping i can hop that motor up a little bit but shh, that's for a future video other than that i'm gonna finish tearing this thing apart take you guys on a journey i know i haven't been doing time lapse on this stuff because it's kind of boring it's just me turning a wrench over and over and over again so i'll put a time lapse video on this stuff so you can see what i'm doing because I know a lot of people start getting worried when they're getting this in depth when they do this kind of stuff. They don't uh, they don't quite know as much, you know. And, and that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm making these YouTube videos, to help a guy out. So stay tuned. We're going to get this cam out of here tonight. Got a lot of night left, so... So I started taking this balancer off and I stopped myself and I thought, you know, maybe I should uh, maybe I should show you guys how to do this. So you get a steering wheel slash harmonic balancer puller. Make sure you have fine thread bolts here, here, and here. On here, I got a round cylinder piece with a, if I can get it to show, it's just got like a coned nipple a pointy cone nipple and that goes and it rides on the crankshaft the end of the crankshaft where the bolt goes but it's designed to not destroy the threads for your crankshaft because there's threads in there for your harmonic balancer bolt so put that in there like so there it's nice and tight where i can't turn it by hand short sorry for the shakes but and you start running her off. Slowly twisting it. I'm going to get this off and I'll come back to you guys once I get this off. Got the balancer off. Came out pretty good. One thing to note when you pull your balancer off, if you're ever in this situation, take a look at your balancer. Excuse me, let me grab a light. You see this right here? See 
See that line in there? If you can, if you can feel that with your fingernail, it's too deep. Now, if you get lucky enough and your new seal on your timing cover is a little different design and say it rides right here or right here for some reason, you're okay. But if the new seal rides in the exact same spot, it's gonna leak. You're gonna have a balancer leak. You're gonna have the front main seal leak. So one way to fix this, because these aren't easy to press on and off, is you can go to your local parts stores and you can get what they call a speedy sleeve. Real thin piece of metal that fits over this really, really, really tight. And then they usually give you a new seal or um, if it's such a tight fit, such a perfect fit, they won't give you a new seal. It'll actually be okay. But 99% of the time they give you a new seal. So I think that's what I'm going to do with this one is a speedy sleeve because this one's pretty deep. If I can't find a speedy sleeve, I'll look for a new balancer because I see the rubber here is cracked. And when you start getting in a, it's actually pushing out too. When you start getting into performance, which this isn't a performance engine by all means, once you start getting into performance, this metal piece can actually slip from this piece. It'll slip on the rubber. Then your timing marks are way off, and then you're then you're really in a world of mysteries because once those timing marks are off, you will be stumped every time you try to time the, the engine. So, so far, so good. Everything's pulled apart. Now, I'm going to pull that other valve cover off. Actually, I'm going to take the distributor out first, pull the other valve cover off. I'll take this line right here, which is your vacuum line and your transmission, bungee it safely up um, so I don't break it. And then other than that, once I get that valve cover off and a uh, uh, distributor out, I can pull the intake off. Once the intake's off, I can start loosening my rocker arms and start assessing my push rods to make sure my push rods are at least savable. So I'm going to get this stuff pulled off. If I run into something that I think you guys should know about, I will definitely let you know. But other than that, let's tear this thing apart and see what we got going on. Alrighty, we got the intake off. I know it's not the best to see in there, but um, there's oil in there because I just had it running to pull a truck in. No bent push rods, no, no nothing goofy looking. So I'm gonna take a cardboard box and take all the uh, push rods out and organize them correctly. So then when I get the new cam, I know where to put them. While I pull them out, I'm gonna check the tips, make sure they're not wore. Other than that, I'll get the push rods out, then we're gonna lift this sucker up so we can get that oil pan off and then we're gonna get that cam out. Well, here's where we find out how bad the cam really is. Taking the lifters out. Here's cylinder number two lifter. Give me a second to wipe this one off. So this would be the exhaust valve on cylinder two. I mean, you can see where, of course, it won't focus. You can see where the lift or the, where the cam lobe is making making its wear groove, but it's got some divot, but it's not bad. Typical cam lobe wear. I'm gonna just set that on top of the bore it came out of. All right, here's intake for this. Same cylinder. <laughs> A 
come out of the bores relatively easy. Oh, this one is not bad at all. This one's perfect. On a 100,000 mile motor, this is what you want to see. That's perfect. So I guess you could say the other one was a little worn. Now these are the two lifters I am concerned about. Because earlier in the video, when we had those lifters that weren't moving, that's this cylinder that I'm dealing with right now. If I can get the lifter to stick to my magnet so I can pull it out. So the lifter I have in my hand is for cylinder number four, and this is the intake. Now, this one wasn't, um, was moving, but it was clacking pretty hard. Doesn't look like the lifters collapsed or anything, but there's some significant amount of wear. It's very unsmooth. It's not even a smooth wear. When you can see the lifter was not actually spinning. Usually these spin slowly in the bore. This one wasn't. Yeah, this camera. We should focus. Come on, focus. Right here. See the line in the center going this way? That means it wasn't spinning in the bore like it should and it was just bouncing. Um, I don't know what the cause really is of, of that, to be exact. Now, this one is the one I expect to see a lot of damage. Bear with me here. I'm trying to get her out of the bore. Oh, yeah. Wait till you guys see this one. Oops. This one's bad. This one's worse than the motor I got on the engine stand that's got the same issue. Holy man. Wait till you guys see this one. I'm going to try and get it really cleaned off so I can talk about it. All right, hopefully this focuses. Here's the lifter from the one that wasn't moving at all. That sucker is a crater. Holy macaroni. It's all black from not spinning in the bore. She's pretty wiped out. Man, that's a deep grater. That's nuts. So that's primarily what I wanted to show you guys. I think I'm gonna see pretty much all the same wear on the rest of the lifters. But I wanted to show you that lifter because I knew that one was gonna be pretty raunchy. So I'm gonna continue to pull these lifters out of the bores. Then I'm gonna get this thing up, drain the oil pull a pan and a timing cover and hopefully I can pull this camshaft out tonight yet before it gets too late on me. Let me dig into this, get this taken care of so I can get this camshaft out for you guys before my camera dies. All right guys, sorry I didn't show you guys the timing chain, but I actually, I guess, lied because the top gear was actually a metal gear, but I'm gonna attempt to pull this out one-handed here while on camera. Hopefully I can do this. Hopefully I got enough room here. Come on. Thinking I'll have plenty of room. Oh, just perfect. All right, here it is. Here's the moment of truth. Let me go into the tailgate where I can set this down. I think I see it. No cam lobe. She's done. Bad camshaft. All the rest of them don't look too bad. There's, there's typical wear on them. Other than that, they're not bad at all. Now I just scuffed up the front uh, cam lobe. I'm hoping the bearings are in good shape. They're looking like they're going to be in good shape. That's a good, that's a good sign. I'll go and I'll try and grab a shot of the first cam bearing here see what we can see she's a little she's a little scuffed up i'm kind of concerned about that i'll have somebody who's a little more oh yeah look at my hands 
I'll have someone who's a little more knowledgeable about it than me take a look at it. I obviously can't get to the second one. Might have to take a bore scope in there. It's looking like there's all kinds of metal on my fingers here. Well, I'll have somebody take a look at this and see, get a second, second input. It's kind of scuffed up in this one spot here, but I could have did that earlier because I was kind of dicking with this, so... I don't know. She's pretty bad. She's pretty bad on there. I'll have to take a take and uh, have somebody look at it and see. I got a buddy who's really, really good with the small block stuff. So I'll take a look at them and see. But as far as that goes, that's going to be a wrap on the camshaft video. This is probably going to be a long video. And if you made it this far, I'm glad you did. I'm really, really, really glad you did. But please like, subscribe to see more stuff like this. I get pretty involved with this stuff. So hopefully I can safely put another camshaft in here and be able to use this motor i really don't want to have to pull this motor out after i did all this work just assembling it in-house so other than that guys please like please subscribe to make sure your notifications are on stay tuned for more we're going to get this thing fixed i don't care what it takes we'll have this thing fixed and going the c20 will be on the road as a daily driver so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed there's more content coming